Well, so we've just been having a look around your facility here and you've got various tests up on the wall. What sort of testing do you use for your fighters? Beyond obviously the ultimate test, are they winning fights? What sort of yeah. testing are you using? You know, just as, I mean, I think, I think of every single day as an assessment. Yeah. So if I got guys doing, you know, a double front kettlebell squat, I watch them. Yeah. You know, because their bodies will change from week to week. Yeah. You know, they might be nursing an Achilles strain because they didn't listen and they went and ran hills. Yeah. And then they sparred, and then they went swimming, and then they went for a run. I mean, they'll do so much. Yeah. So I'm always kind of assessing their situation because of the, the nature of that sport is pretty violent. There's always injuries and ailments and things like that that pop up. And I, if I see them compensating, they don't always tell me. Yeah. You know, so I wanna, I'm always watching them to see. You know, so um, There's a lot of gray area, yeah. I guess, that goes with it. How about your actual test? Like you've got your, you've got your ropes tests on the wall there, 20 minutes on the ropes, what other tests have yeah. you got to A lot of the, we just got a lot of toys in here, so we use a lot of ropes, <laughs> we got tires, we got stones, we got yeah. kettlebells, we got, I mean, all kinds of little games, and I think for not only just our fighters, but all the general clientele that come through, yeah. it's always fun to kind of have milestones yeah. to hit, you know, so for a lot of them, the fighters, like, I don't even really worry about it, you know, but uh, for some of them, you know, like for the Versa Climber, for example, I have a, a lactic, a lactic, and an aerobic type test. Yep. So there's a 10 seconds. If you can get 70 feet in 10 seconds, it's a pretty good explosive feat. Yep. If you want to go for a minute and you hit 300, like that's about as lactic acid and nasty as it can get. Yep. You know, but now training that and having people strive for it, people have a goal. For a lot of people to come in, they might just say, ah, well, I just want to look better. Yep. It's not really emotional enough, yeah. but you'd be amazed how just getting their name on the wall motivates them, yeah. you know. And for some of the guys, especially the fighters, if I team them up and tag them against each other and make it competitive somehow, whether it's to get their name up on the wall or not, just to beat each other, they go crazy, you know. Where if the guy's kind of dragging ass one day and I said, hey, John just got, you know, 85 feet in 10 seconds and he called you out, what's the scoop? They'll, they turn it on like crazy. So that's an easy way to kind of get them dialed yeah. in. Sweet. Okay, let's leave the training for now then. In terms of nutrition then, what's your, what's your general approach? Have you got a specific template you use or again, does it depend on the individual? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the individual too. You know, the easiest way for that I always tell everybody to kind of think about it is if God made it, eat it. Yeah. You know, whether you believe in God or not or whatever it is, it's an easy way to think about it. Because yeah. we as, as humans kind of jack everything up real bad. Yeah. You know, sugars and hydrogenated oils and all the nonsense that's processed and packaged. If I can just get people to make sure they're getting the protein in their system, make sure that they're getting, uh, you know, the healthy fats and different things and a ton of vegetables, and they're not perfect, they're improved. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I see the guys that are pro, the guys that are serious, the guys that have $100,000 on the line for a contract, typically don't have too much trouble staying focused you know and if it's a local guy and you know not that they're not any more committed but you know if they're getting a thousand dollars for a fight they tend to swagger a little bit they don't really pay attention what do you find like, the biggest mistakes like you've got a guy comes in looking to get a pro contract poor nutrition what tends to be the, the main problems in his nutrition what do you try and change immediately well, i mean it's the same as like every typical you know typical person i mean you've got convenience food yeah. And people are long hours and they're stressed out and they want to do whatever's convenient. So they stop, drive through, you know, they eat a lot of sugary snacks, they drink too much caffeine and alcohol, yeah. they don't get enough water, they don't get a lot of the basic crap that everybody needs. So for the general public, they just get heavy yeah. and out of shape and have disease. For a fighter, they might be leaner and look a certain part, but their recovery sucks, their yeah. performance isn't where it should be. They can get away with a lot of stuff because they're 20, 25 years old, yeah. but it catches up with them, yeah. you know, and they'll start to burn out, they start to, they don't recover as fast, they start doing two and three a day workouts and they start to fall apart, get injuries. I mean, they might say, well, oh, I hurt my shoulder. It might not be your shoulder, it might just be that you drove yourself into the ground yeah. and weren't recovering for six yeah. months and it just caught up with you. So, as much of the good food that we can pile in, um, 
That's the, uh, the next question is obviously some of these guys training two to three times a day. How can they get the calories in? Obviously without just ramming themselves full of food, not being able to train or eating junk food. What's your advice to guys like that? I mean, it depends again on their schedule and their willingness to, to do so, you know. Um, but around here, I mean, in Southern California, it's not hard to find a health restaurant. Yeah. You know, they're all over the place. Um, really, it's just a matter of planning because if they are doing two, two days, um, I typically don't recommend too many three days. I think they yeah. start to fall apart. Yeah. Um, it's a matter of kind of mapping stuff out a little bit better. It's no different than an executive. They got busy schedules too. Yeah. They got to eat right. If they don't plan it in, I mean, it might sound cheesy, but if they don't plan in time with their kids, then their schedule falls apart. Yeah. You know, fighters are no different. They're just busy like everybody else. They just need to learn how to prioritize and plan and get a little bit more organized. Yeah. And once I, th I think if once you educate them, they kind of, sure, don't make slip ups. We all do. But at least they have a, an idea of what to do. Yeah. And if they are busy and not running around, they don't drive to McDonald's. They might go somewhere else and get a better. You know. Okay, obviously we've spoken a little bit to the injuries of professional sport or any kind of sport really, a lot of danger of inflammation on top of obviously people are eating an inflammatory diet. Do you use any specific supplements or? Yeah, I kind of keep that part pretty simple. Yeah. Um, I like some type of greens, multivitamin, multimineral, that's like a natural food based something. Yeah. Um, healthy oils. Because there's just not enough of that. And there's yep. such an imbalance in our diet, and then a lot of uh, a variety of different enzymes and probiotics just to keep their digestive tract healthy, yep. and keep their immunity up. You know, because especially if they get stressed and run down or working out too much, and then they'll get sick yep. almost on cue. You know, yep. so I like I like that as just a good foundational piece. Um, I found a lot of the guys with the glutamine and branch chains and stuff like that that their soreness and recovery from workouts went up. Yep. Um, so a lot of the guys have been using those in and around workout times. Um, and that's really it. I don't get into the, a lot of the bodybuilder stuff, yeah, yeah. the muscle, you know, I don't like any of that stuff, yeah. the stimulants and stuff. I try to stay away from them as much as I can. Yeah. Um, so essentially we're trying to get them healthy first and obviously build Yeah, man, I mean, the human body's a freak. Yeah. It's freaking unbelievable what it does when you give it what it needs. Yeah. So I don't think we need to overcomplicate it with a bunch of nonsense. It's just like, keep it simple, do the stuff that you know it needs. And your body's remarkable. Yeah. Just listen to it and kind of learn how to work with it. You know? yeah. Nice one. Actually, you said running with it. That was one more question I wanted to ask you. What's your thought on fighters running in terms of, you know, in the past, it's all boxers, you see them out on the roads, 10K every day. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? I think a lot of people, because of our sedentary lifestyle, and I don't think fighters are too far away from it, even though they do do a lot of work. Yeah. I think most people, their ankles, their hips, their upper back, stuff like that is locked up and it's stiff because we sit like yeah. this, or the computer, the TV, the car, whatever it is, yeah. way too much. Yeah. When people, is, if, they're, if those things are stiff and you have them try to go run, you know, that's a lot of force that's going through those joints that don't function correctly. Yeah. And not everybody, but from the majority of people that I see, they don't function ideally. And especially with MMA, if you guys got jacked up ankles, an ACL, old ACL injury. Maybe they use his hamstring for replacing it, yeah. which compromises his hamstring. Maybe his hip's stiff, like, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. You have all these things that are gonna have to start um, compensating. And then it just leads to other stuff. So yeah. I'm not completely against it, um, but I think that there's better alternatives that are out there, yeah. especially for depending on what type of fighter they are, that don't bang on them as much. Awesome. Well, Corey, thank you for your time. It's a wealth of information there. Hopefully, uh, I'll actually get to train with you sometime soon. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. for your time.